Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are talking about a term that you might have heard a little bit here and there on this show. Maybe you've seen it start to appear more on X or in articles. We're going to talk about what it means, why it's coming up more and more right now, and why it matters for the industry as a whole. To kick us off, let's turn to a recent tweet from Toby Lutke, the CEO of Shopify. Last week, he wrote, I really like the term context engineering over prompt engineering. It describes the core skill better the art of providing all the context for the task to be plausibly solved by the LLM. Now, a lot of folks jumped into the conversation to agree. McKay Wrigley wrote, totally agree. These days you get way less performance bonus out of dumb tricks like I'll pay you $100 if you get it right, which is how it should be. All of the alpha is in assembling context well to reduce the fog of war for the model. It's converging to human-ish info needs. Nick Dobo says soon it, context engineering, will include providing the tools, agent environment, and guardrails so the LLMs can find the context on its own. So basically what we have here is a different way to think about how to get the most out of LLMs. Since the beginning of ChatGPT, there has been this new field of prompt engineering, which has spawned innumerable courses and online tutorials, and many tricks and tips and quirks of how to ask in the right way to get the things you need out of LLMs. Now, along the way, prompt engineering has become more and more, let's say, diffuse, if not at this stage, less important. And what I mean by that is that the smarter that models get, the more that tips from 6 or 12 months ago cease to work. And in many cases, there's also UI-related or interface-related abstraction of prompting where some amount of prompt engineering is being taken over by the tools themselves. To take one example, when I was designing a cover for a recent episode... My prompt to ideogram was fun, retro-futuristic cover for the quest for the solopreneur unicorn, 1950s mid-century modern. However, what ideogram turned that into was a retro-futuristic book cover in the style of 1950s mid-century modern design featuring a determined, sharply dressed solopreneur riding a majestic glowing white unicorn through a swirling nebula. The solopreneur wears a tailored gray suit, a confident smile, and pilots the unicorn with a futuristic joystick, while the unicorn's horn emits a beam of light, illuminating the path ahead. The background consists of stylized geometric planets and stars rendered in a vibrant palette of teal, orange, and yellow, with the title, The Quest for the Solopreneur Unicorn, boldly displayed in a classic chrome-accented font. So you're seeing this type of thing happen a lot more in different tools where the tool themselves are trying to take the essence of what you were asking for and do a better prompt than you could do. Context is something different, and it refers to another part of the value chain of these LLMs. Context is all of the information you give an LLM that helps it answer the question more correctly. So for example, if you are using ChatGPT's O3 or O3 Pro, which is particularly optimized to be better at context, when you add a bunch of files to your prompt, that is the context that you're giving it. Context engineering then becomes about, are you giving the LLM the right information that it needs to give you the output that you're looking for? And it turns out this isn't just about which documents to share with it, It's also literally an engineering task around how to carry context across more complex systems. You might remember we recently talked about a post from Cognition, who creates Devon, called Don't Build Multi-Agents. And this was all anchored around context and context engineering. Basically, the argument in this piece, for those who don't remember, was that the multi-agent workflow, where an agent breaks down a task and hands it to multiple different sub-agents with an agent that then combines the results on the other side, is one that is doomed to be fairly brittle because the transmission of context from agent to subagent and then subagent back to agent can be really difficult. The example he gave was this. Suppose your task is build a Flappy Bird clone. This gets divided into subtask one, build a moving game background with green pipes and hitboxes, and subtask two, build a bird that you can move up and down. It turns out subagent one accidentally mistook your subtask and started building a background that looks like Super Mario Bros., Subagent 2 built you a bird, but it doesn't look like a game asset, and it moves nothing like the one in Flappy Bird. Now the final agent is left with the undesirable task of combining these two miscommunications. Now he goes to some potential solves, but still finds them unreliable, and ultimately comes to the idea of instead building a single-threaded linear agent. In the cognition model, the agent breaks down the task and breaks it into subtasks rather than subagents. So the same agent does the breaking down of the task, then the doing of subtask 1 and subtask 2, and then combines the results, with the idea being largely that this carries context between the different tasks better than the other multi-agent system. Here the context is continuous. At the same time, they recognize that as very large tasks 
start to have so many subparts that context windows start to overflow that there may be a need for a new approach. One architecture that they share is the idea of a sidelong context compression LLM, which basically across each stage compresses the conversation and action so far, i.e. the context, into a set of key moments and decisions, with that compressed context being what informs the next subtask's work. Now, whether you agree with this strategy or not is not the point of this piece. It's to show how context engineering is starting to become a part of some of the most important questions in AI, which has to do with how to build agents that are actually highly functional. And if you look around for about five minutes, we are seeing a ton of discussion of context engineering pop up. Just a couple of days ago, Lance Martin wrote on their blog a post called Context Engineering for Agents. Lance writes, as Andre Karpathy puts it, LLMs are a kind of new operating system. The LLM is like the CPU, and its context window is like RAM, representing a working memory for the model. Context enters an LLM in several ways, including prompts, e user instructions, retrieval, e.g. documents, and tool calls, e.g. APIs. Just like RAM, the LLM context window has limited communication bandwidth to handle these various sources of context. And just like an operating system curates what fits into a CPU's RAM, we can think about context engineering as packaging and managing the context needed for an LLM to perform a task. So once again, this is coming at that same issue that we saw in the Cognition blog of having to engineer systems that get the right context, but don't just dump everything in willy-nilly. What Lance points out is the growing importance of this domain. He points to a quote from Cognition again, who writes, context engineering is effectively the number one job of engineers building AI agents. And another quote from Anthropic that read, agents often engage in conversations spanning hundreds of turns, requiring careful context management strategies. Now, the second part of this blog is all about the ways that we can manage that context and new strategies for that sort of context management, which is a little bit more technical and out of scope for this particular show, but I will include this in the show notes so you can go check it out for yourself. Lance talks about curating context, i.e. managing the tokens that an agent sees at each turn, persisting context, involving systems to store, save, and retrieve context over time, and isolating context, involving approaches to partition context across agents or environments. Lance points out that we are still at the very beginning early baby steps for forming general principles for building agents, and that's why there's such an explosion in this discussion. Another post that was published on the same day comes from the Langchain blog and is called The Rise of Context Engineering. The piece reads, Context engineering is building dynamic systems to provide the right information and tools in the right format such that the LLM can plausibly accomplish the task. Most of the time when an agent is not performing reliably, the underlying cause is that the appropriate context, instructions, and tools have not been communicated to the model. LLM applications are evolving from single prompts to more complex dynamic agentic systems. As such, context engineering is becoming the most important skill an AI engineer can develop. And again, this piece really reiterates that when agentic systems mess up and LLMs tend to mess up, either because they're just not good enough or because it didn't have the appropriate context. What's more, the author argues that as models get better, it tends to be more that second reason. The author concludes, context engineering isn't a new idea. Agent builders have been doing it for the past year or two. It's a new term that aptly describes an increasingly important skill. So I think that there are actually two different domains of context engineering that are worth us keeping in mind and that are worth you and I exploring. The first is context engineering in the context of AI engineers and actual agent building. In other words, for people who are building agentic systems, software engineers that are thinking about how to make agents more performant and work on higher complexity and higher order tasks, these questions of context engineering are about system design. They're about things like the context compression LLM that sits alongside a single agent system and makes it work better. There is a whole entire important discourse happening in that domain that will influence the shape of the agents that even non-coders and non-technical people ultimately interact with. However, my strong guess is that we're likely to start seeing context engineering also refer to a term for consumers and just regular LLM users in the same way that we have increasingly taught ourselves or tried to teach ourselves how to prompt LLMs to get the most out of them, my guess is that context engineering in a user environment is going to become a more important field and discipline as well. What's the right amount of information to give any given model? Which models are better at different types of information? 
Indeed, one area where we have started to see this is in the release of O3 Pro. You'll remember that the piece from Latent Space that I thought was the best summary of O3 Pro was called God is Hungry for Context, and it basically argued that the big difference between O3 and O3 Pro was that O3 Pro was better at handling lots and lots of context. When the authors of this piece gave it a huge volume of information about their company, including past meeting notes and recorded audio, it came back with a much better strategy for them than O3 did alone. And so in that, we have context engineering from a user standpoint, both in terms of model selection and which model is going to be better at context, and second, in terms of what type of context to give it. I think it's an extremely dynamic field. I think it's likely going to be every bit, if not more important than prompt engineering in how we use these tools. And I'm excited to share more about this as it becomes a bigger part of conversation. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's little baby primer on context engineering. I hope this was useful. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.